Hi guys, it's Blackie for Shaman's Forge Woodscraft. Okay, one of my subscribers asked about how do you lash a knife to a pole to make a survival spear. First off, this is not a really great idea because I do not like the idea of throwing my knife in any way. However, if we're talking about turning it into a pole with a knife on it for reach or for snakes or something, I understand that. So let's talk about how to lash a knife to a pole, turn it into a pseudo spear. But number one, I want you to understand is I am not recommending you do this for a throwing spear. For a thrusting weapon, yeah, it works very good. Or for reaching up high to cut fruit or something down out of a tree, yes, there's a very efficient way to do it. And let me show you how to okay. do that right now. I'm going to take my Master Woodsman. And I'm going to take me a good length pole of about one inch in diameter. You want green for this job. And you want to crown off the end so it's not going to split on you or anything. Like that. Just like that. Now, looking at where the point of the blade is, you want to affix it to the spear so that it is as close as possible to the center line. You don't want to do it like that where it's too far out. You want it to be a natural center point so that when you're reaching out there at range trying to do something, it naturally that's where it's going to be. Now this is the way I'm going to fix the knife to the blade. This will be where the handle is going to fit. So I'm going to come right here and I'm going to start a notch, kind of a shelf right here. And I'm going to square this handle off a little bit right here so that the handle of the knife naturally wants to lay in there. If I want to cut below half point of the spear, I just want it to be a relatively flat area for the knife handle. And this is also where you've looked at the length of the spear and came up with what's the natural curve and etc. So it goes roughly where you want. There, about like that. Now, this Master Wisdom, I have two natural divots right here in the handle. I'm going to utilize those. So I'm going to come up here and marking where that would be naturally. I'm going to cut me a couple of seven notches right here and 360 right here. Just a good place for my cord to lock into. Even undercut it just a little bit toward the head of the spear. And just to keep that from slipping, I'm going to kind of square that back right there at that too. Just so it's not so rounded. Okay, now I've got a piece of cord. And this is already one of my long, uh, what I call a bushcraft zip tie. It's just a Canadian jam knot already made up. So I'm going to take loose the knot, leaving the jam knot in position. Go back here, not that far from the actual jam, and I'm going to form a clove hitch right here. Whoop. Twisted the wrong way. Just like that. And that's going to form a clove hitch right there. Okay, now 
I've got that locked in there good and tight. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring the knife up here. And I want this lash to be at the 1 o'clock and the 7 o'clock position. Okay, so I'm going to put my knife blade up there just like that. And now I'm going to go around twice. Just like that. And when I get up here at the top, that's when I'm going to tie my cinch lock. In this case, I'm going to use this, zip, this bushcraft tie. I'm going to tie a Canadian jam knot. Just like this. Put that loose end through there while it's nice and loose. And now, cinching up that. So that goes around. Comes back up. Just like that. Now, I'm going to cinch that up tight in that position. Just like that. Now, I'm going to take it and torque it. It ain't going to like that. Into position. Just like that. Now, William has got a lanyard that works really good for that. I'm going to pull it actually where it's a little too far over. I'm going to pull a knife down here and I'm going to finish lashing it in position down here at the bottom. Just like this. There, a couple of half hitches right there, and voila. Now any of these loose ends, tuck them out of the way where they're not going to be binding up on you or whatever, cause problems later on. I'm just going to half hitch over the top of those two, just like that. But, that has got it where the knife is in line with the spear itself. It's on there, it barely wiggles, because I pulled it down tight enough. I can get it to wiggle a little bit left or right right there. I could probably cinch this up just a little bit more, but you get the idea. Now I've created a spear with which I can stab into something. Now, what would I want to use this for? It gives me a longer reach. Now, if I'm going to reach up into a tree or something, I can do it. Hang on, let me adjust the camera. Now, it's given me a spear that I can reach out and stick into a snake, something like that, where I don't have the option. Now, usually, if I was going to harvest a snake and I didn't have any other tool, I'm just going to cut me a good green limb, something like this, that I can slap the base of the tail and kill the snake. But what if I'm in thick cover where I don't have that option? It's deep grass or something, or some other small animal that I'm trying to get a shot at. I don't want to ever want to throw my knife, but I may want to use it as a thrusting weapon. Getting it out there and uh, sticking it for frogs, for fish, for snakes, for chipmunks, things like small rodents that I might get lucky. And it's going to be luck with a really small rodent. Rabbit or something, yeah, pretty much. But like this, it's lash solid to the point. Those two seven notches 
on impact want to bite in deeper and want to keep it from going forward. My bindings to the handle right there don't want to slide off of this handle. And then the back is anchored good and solid so that thrust in or thrust out, there's two bind points to cam either way with slack and thus make a spear. Now, this gives me reach to reach up high way up yonder and try to cut something off from way up there that I need. Say I'm harvesting a certain type of vine and I want as much of it as I can get or there's pears up there that I'm trying to get down and I've tried throwing sticks and knocking it just don't want to work. I can reach up and cut that clump of scuplings down without smashing them and ruining them. It gives me reach where I can reach out and utilize my blade at length. That's how you lash it together and make a spear. Now, down here at this bottom, I could easily use another Canadian jam knot down here, and I've got another one that I could easily just tie it and bring it up blood tight down here. Simple, easy to do, just like that. Got a second knot, come up, go through it. Lock behind the first one. Begin cinching it. Now if I take me a toggle, using those simple tools, a dingle stick, ah, that ain't, it barely wiggles. Now I've got it even more secure. Keep up with your danglies, don't let them hang in or nothing. If I was going to be facing something big and mean, and I had nothing else, I would probably just sharpen a stick. I don't want to waste my knife. But if there's something I've got to pierce in and guarantee that when I hit it, it's going to slice in, that Master Woodsman is going to take it out. Hope this helps, guys. Leave any questions or comments below, please. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. I'm Blackie for Shaman's Forge Woodscraft. Wishing you safe journeys. Have a great day, guys.